What's going on, people? Hello. Welcome to another great edition of the Film Review. Movies, music, culture, politics, and society. We are the husband and wife team. I'm Crazy D. Tracy. And we review movies, music, culture, politics, and society. And do we have a great show for you today. First of all, we have to say that the show is brought to you by our sponsor, right? Yeah. Our sponsor, Fly Blue Boutique Creations. Creations. And this is the bracelet right here. So you can see it, it comes in unisex. And you yeah. can go right to the Crazy D Film Do IG page and you'll be able to see more about how to order and all of that. And while we're here, we're going to do some, uh, some, uh, what can I say? What can, what do I want to call this? We're going to do some population. First of all, we're going to uh, start a uh, watch. What's going on to Pamela Johnson? She just chimed yeah. in. We have a great show for you today because we're talking about the Hustlers movie. Yeah. Is it dope or nope? Is Jennifer Lopez's is Jennifer Lopez's performance hype? Is it pipe hype or is it really Oscar worthy? We're going to be talking about that. Of course, we've got part two to the Lou Nail interview, the exclusive Lou Nail interview. And we're talking about is talking black and I'm proud just a hustle. Hustle, not a hustle, but a hustle. Meaning that you're just dancing, kind of tap dancing, just dancing, just to get the point across, right? Trying to make people uh, think that you're something that you're not, right? So before we begin, let's start putting up some of these so we can see what we're doing here. So like we said, like we said, this is part two, right? coming up. This is part two of a special episode 76. We are on episode 76 wow. of the film review. Unbelievable. It is just unbelievable that we are on episode 76 of the film review. Right? right. And we are doing our thing here as I start the watch party. So we're starting the watch party right now people. And we want you to uh, chime in and Call in and do all that. 213-943-3358. That's 213-943-3358. How are you liking our new design? You know, Crazy D does all of the graphics. You know what I mean? I come from Cleveland, Ohio. And, you know, you do it yourself or you just don't do it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So you get together with like-minded people and you do it yourself or you just don't do it. And that's what we do right here. From Cleveland, Ohio, right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. So we do all the graphics. All the graphics is done by Crazy D. We make it happen. I think I, I like it because it's kind of tabloidish yeah. type front, and then you can always scan the barcode. There's a barcode on it. Let me move it over so you can see that as we do this. Let me move it over so you can get it in the frame so that you can see it. But it is a barcode there, right? And you can freeze frame. And scan the barcode after the show. You can come back to this when we re when we replay. And you can scan the code. You can go to all of the other episodes of the film review. Movies, music, culture, politics, and society. Right? Yeah. So we, we do our thing around here and we make it happen. We, we run at a high level. We push at a high level because that's what makes the world go around. You have to push at a high level. To make sure that people are seeing her, recognize, and appreciate it, and that's what we do here. That is our, that is what we strive to do to get people seeing her, recognize, and appreciate it. Right. So we have the watch party going. I just have to label it real quick. Well, how was your week? Go. Oh, my, my week was uh pretty good. You know, I've been editing up a lot of things, right? A lot of different shows, programming. Had to edit up, so it's been it's been a busy week for me. How's your week been? It's been a great week. The week went by quickly. Flew by. Matter of fact, this year flew by. Years flying by. 
No, I agree with that. Okay. So let's see, where are we gonna go from here as we go? Alright, so let's let's bring that up. So we talked about our sponsor. We got that out the way. We got what you're watching out the way. Now, before we continue and get on our topics, let's just say. Lower Land Theater. Lower Land Theater. Every Saturday morning, there is a new episode of Lower Land Theater where you get the best of actors from Cleveland, LA, Los Angeles, excuse me, Los Angeles, it is LA, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and Atlanta acting opposite. Yours truly, Crazy D. That's right. So, Lord Land Theater, and we make sure that the actors are seen, heard, recognized, and appreciated. And it's that various acting prowess going opposite me on screen, right? So, send in your headshot and bio to Lord Land Enterprises at hotmail.com. That's Lord Land Enterprises at hotmail.com. What's going on, Donald? I see you just chimed in. Donald Randell, right? Uh, we're still looking for the uh, package of Donald. It hasn't come yet, so we will. Soon we will. We're going to get this started, and you know what we're talking about. Okay, so look. Lord Land Theater, Lord Land Enterprises at Hotmail.com. Every Saturday morning on LordLandFilms.com on a, a page on Facebook, a new episode comes up and the actors are seen, heard, recognized, and appreciated. People watch it when it first comes on, it gets 250 hits off the bat, then it just grows from there. And then when you scan this code, when you scan the code right there, right? When you come back after the show is over and you come back up here and you scan this code, this will take you directly to Lord Land Theater. And you can watch all seven episodes that are up right now. The eighth episode debuts next Saturday at around 9 a.m., 9.15 a.m. A new episode comes for Lord Land Theater. 9 a.m. what? Uh, what? That's, that's, that's uh, PT, Pacific okay. Time, on the East Coast, that they're three hours ahead. So that would be 12 or 12.15, right, in the afternoon, right? Noon or afternoon, right? So we want to say that. Now, as we keep on breezing through here, this right here, Crazy D makes movies. That's what this one is called. Let me see if I can move it over just a little bit more. All right. Crazy D makes movies, people. And when you scan this code, it goes to one of the cult classics oh, that yeah. I produced yeah. called The Shifter. The, Shifter. the Black Eyes Chronicles, yes. The Shifter. All right. That's the film that won the, won the Hollywood Fringe Festival. Yeah, Hollywood Fringe Festival. Curator's pick. That's right. Sure did. Sure did. And it is as great and just as important and just as topical as it was when it first came out. And so when you scan the code, you uh, are able to watch the film, but it's not free. Right. It's not free. Yeah, and also, it's a weird. Also, is it Case Western Reserve? Yeah, Case Western Reserve. Sure did. Yeah, during, during there. During that, so we have laurels on this yeah. film. And it is one of the best. Yeah, one of the best. One of my favorites. One of the favorites out of the yeah. Black Ice Chronicles series. Yeah. You know, series of films that come from off of the uh, world of the Black Ice Chronicles, right? So as we keep going through, before we get started, we have to sweep the floor and clear the table. What I love about that one is it's um, actually a community uh, film because it was a lot of actors from within the community as well as international like Diana from Russia, from Russia that's right but Thank everyone you. else was Title character. yeah you know a major part of the community major part of the community they all came out from the community to be a part of the project and so. the story is about community yeah it is without it? being <laughs> preachy so it's funny how um the Hollywood Fringe 
uh, award, the curators picked the key, you know, was given to you because he said it had a feel for a community. That's right. Without him even knowing that it was, you know, That's actually right. people from out of the community. So it's just like, people could just tell, he could just tell that it was the film, it was a, a project of love. That's and it right. came across. And it comes across on yeah, screen. It does. And such, right. And it's a, it, it's a auteur. Right. Classic. It shows my ability as a director, as an auteur, because the music is yeah. placed right. Yeah. Everything down to the dress, everyone's dress code right. was organized and done right. all the way through to the edit right. and the sound right. reinforcement, all that right. created by yours truly, right? So that's a, it's a beautiful piece. So again, when you scan that code, which is not up any, right now, uh, when you scan, when you go back and you scan crazy makes movies flyer when you scan the code it takes you right there now people we are on the fifth episode of the film review talk lot right so you go right over to soundcloud and you type in the film review uh lord land films and then everything comes up and you're able to listen to everything that's on the page especially the film review talk live where right? we're on the fifth episode and we talk things that people don't know also i've got some feedback what's going on to alicia Moore? she just chimed alicia. in um i got some feedback where people were talking about democracy is a form of government this is true but however i can't help it if you haven't studied how democracy is a is used with capitalism, which makes it an economic form of government going in to push people to become capitalists. So the definition that I gave of it is correct. You just have to research a little bit more and you will see how democracy is used to shape people into the economic system of capitalism, right? So that's what we want to say about that because I got feedback on that and you know behind the scenes and we just had to uh, address it, right? Now, here we are. Now we're getting ready to start. Okay, people. So you know, let me take a breath because that was that was a lot of breath right there <laughs> and talk. Now listen, you know. Part one of the interview is everywhere. Part one came out in episode 76, which is part one of this, but part two, 76, we're here to play part two. But however, part one is in that episode and it's also on all platforms, uh, Lord Land uh, Films. So you go over to the YouTube and you search uh, TV shows and films by Crazy D, or you can just say, TV shows and films, Lordland Films, and dot com, and then it will come up, and then you will be able to watch everything there. Part one is there. Matter of fact, if you have not looked at the channel lately, it is reorganized, and I mean it is entertaining. And make sure you subscribe, 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 watch, share, like, comment. And you know, I will respond to your comments or we will respond. Hours worth of entertainment. Hours more than hours. Listen, people, we are at 385,000 plus views. We're going for a million on all the content. On our interview content, it's around 155,000, right? And we're going for more on the interview content. So as you go through, you see what we're doing and it is incredible and people love it. We love it. We love the people coming on. What's going on to Brown Big West? Uh, Brown. Chiming in. We see you chiming in. Um, we love you going over there. So we go over there to uh, on YouTube. You go to uh, TV shows and film, Lordland Films. And it comes up and you're able to uh, watch the interview one. And we got a lot of comedy on there. We've got many of the uh, Black Ice Chronicles episodes on there. We have interviews with important people. You just have to go over there and make sure you subscribe, right? Yes. You can also see us on, we have many different platforms. You can also see us on Vimeo, 
vimeo.com forward slash showcase by crazy d that's vimeo forward slash showcase by crazy d all of the various episodes are up there also and then you can watch on your smart tvs or roku devices hooked to your tv by uh, following these instructions it's real simple to do i want to put it up there real quick you can uh, download the youtube or the vimeo app search lordland films on your roku your smart tv and then you can watch us yeah. in your town in your city yeah. if you're on episodes of what we do you can tell your friends in other cities, in other countries, right. to tune in through their smart TVs or Roku devices, and they will see you. And then, you know, if you're smart, you'll be able to use those contacts and that, uh, those eyeballs to get you booked into different areas of the world. If you're an entertainer or you're an actor, you can get yourself booked into different places if you are smart to use the platform that Crazy D set up to get people seen, heard, recognized, and appreciated. That's the purpose of it. And if you use it the way that you're instructed to use it, you will get a claim. And that's make what sure, we're talking about. Yeah, make sure you subscribe and you will receive a notification when we go live. That's right. Ring the bell. Yes. And then you will know when we go live, right? Yes. Let me look at the phone real quick before we go on. See if there's any uh, Messages that we need to say. Let me see. Let me see. We go here. Okay, what's going on? Oh, look, it's, it's a little bit behind here. Let's see. So definitely subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, right? Subscribe. Let me see which one we're on here. Let's see. Let me bring this up here. We'll go here. All right, people. All right, so. Episode one of the interview with Lou Nell went on. This this one right here, part two, goes in more into the interpersonal with Lou Nell, where she talks about her aspirations as a comic, right? And this is what we talk about all the time at uh, Lord Man Films about people being seen, heard, recognized, and appreciated. And that's what we do. We make sure that the sound is pounding. We make sure that the piss picture is crystal clear so that when it goes, so centuries down the line, when, no, when we are no longer here, these interviews will be played and they will be recognized yes. and will go on and we go into depth, we go in depth with the subject of the interview. And we don't just do fluff. We don't just do uh, everyday that. We actually get down to and drill down into the grassroots of things, right? And so this is where we are. And this is what we're gonna go with now. So without further ado, people, and stay tuned afterwards. We're gonna say a few words, but then we're gonna come back with the review yeah. of Hustler's movie. But right now, without further ado, this is the part two yep. of the exclusive Lunel interview on the film review. And it goes a little something like this right here. Uh, and so, it, you know, I'm glad that people know my name. I want to make a difference. I want to go down as a legend. I want to be one of the best that ever did. And I want people to remember me. Mm -hmm. You know, so it feels it feels great, of course. So you're at so you're at Kimmel Comedy Club yes. here in Las Vegas, right there. You right. guys will take a shot of it, I'm sure. Yeah, we will. Here's the thing about your movie: why I made the curators pick of the Hollywood French community. Unity, 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 This is another great episode of the Film Room. Hey everybody, this is Lou Nell, the original bad girl of comedy. I'm here at the Link Promenade in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, and you're watching the Film Review. Magical people, and I always wanted to do a period piece like Shaft or Coffee, 
or you can go back to wearing your platforms again and having afros and bell bottoms and shit. So that's what this is. So it's just an amazing piece of film footage. Craig Brewer is the director. He liked black people. He directed Hustle, Hustle and Flow, and, Flow. <laughs> and this and Coming to America too. Mm -hmm. So um but what is her but what is her character like? Is she a support for Rudy? Well, I don't want to give away too okay, much, okay. but I'm just saying she's his aunt, and um, she gave him the seed money to make his very first album. So she's very influential in his life. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, Z9 used to have out a documentary on Dolomite, just to stay on this for a second, and he talked about how doors were shut to him in the in the very beginning but his film coming out is the blueprint for so many films the, the techniques that they used are is for is used in so many his films time, today but he was ratchet with it you know he only had a certain amount of money he didn't have big you know studio behind a big budget like that so he made do with what he could and he made film and now look we're you know honoring him you know all these years later what he did matter, it mattered to black people, it mattered to us. May not be for everybody, you know, that's fine too. But for us, he's a uh, urban legend, he's an icon. All the pimps and the players looked up to Rudy Ray Moore. I don't know too many black people our age that doesn't know the signified monkey, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it's part of our culture. It's good to celebrate it, you know. Good to celebrate him. Now, how does it feel personally for you to be gaining this acclaim after so many years grinding it out well i've never you know like ever since i left oakland i've it's been the same i've always been popular i've always been popular amongst the regular folk you know um more people are knowing my name now you know there's a little bit more money now not you know stratospheric money like these boys is getting so my lifestyle at home haven't changed much yet, but um, you know, as long as people are starting to know my name, not just my look or my face, that's that girl, that's that girl. They called me Cat Williams for like five years, you know, just because they associated me with Cat. Uh, and so, it, you know, I'm glad that people know my name. I want to make a difference. I want to go down as a legend. I want to be one of the best that ever did it. I want people to remember me, mm -hmm. you know, so it feels, it feels great, of course. And the polish that you have, I often speak on how uh, comics and entertain black entertainers in particular go through the chicken circuit, uh, uh, the chitlin circuit, excuse me, and they go through. And by the time they get to film, by the time they get to television, they are polished and even more, even more, uh, even more interesting on screen than their white counterparts that are up there like take when you played the cashier in, in uh, uh, a, star a star is born. born when when you to me you stole that scene my wife and i were sitting in the theater and you stole the scene that's just because you know no 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 people who don't know me i didn't steal no scene. no 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 they may not be admitting that you stole the scene but you sitting there stoic as the cashier it made me say I would like to follow that storyline and get off of the Star is well, Born you, story. You, you, need, you will be very happy with Dolomite because I cut my nails, I wore a wig, you know. I really wanted to, and I felt like, feel like Eddie's aunt. I mean, I knew uh, Charlie way more than I have interacted with Eddie, but me and Eddie already had a relationship before we started working, but to actually work with him and have it on film where my kid and everybody generations can see it. It's an honor and two Eddie Murphy films in one year and this comeback year is amazing. But um, I just, you know, I love my aunts and my aunts were very influential in my life and I just pulled from that and, you know, I think that me and Eddie, uh, they say we had chemistry, like, but that's real love. And that's, like, that's, love that's why coming to America too, you're in it. Can you give us news about the character that you play? Well, no. No. I can't. But I will say that it's one of the happiest sets I've ever worked on. Tracy Morgan is a joy to be around every day and a miracle. Um, you got Arsenio and Arsenio and Eddie are buddies. And, 
you know, my boy Rodney Perry, we came up through the trenches together. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful way to go to work, you know. Okay, so I only drink at work. Yes. Right? Is that saying that your work is stand-up or are you speaking to also the everyday person that may have a I flask? I happen to have one <laughs> right here. Okay. Lunel, I only drink at work. I only I'll drink at work. This copy. And, and, and this is a CD. This is not a DVD. You can buy it on my website, heylunel.com, H-E-Y-L-U-E-N-E-L-L.com, or you can download it on, you know, iTunes and Spotify and all that stuff. This is just a CD that I recorded live in a club, you know, not unlike Kimmel's and... Um, just talk, you know, just talk about stuff that applies to everybody, you know, relationships and kids and weight and money and college and all that. So there you go. Oh, I, you I appreciate this. We're Playing going to be laughing car. and then we're going to be coming up here to see you Playing do. in the car on the way home. Okay. So do you, like other comics, go to smaller clubs to work out new material before you do a stand-up show like... Uh, easily uh, annoyed easily no easily annoyed no, easily so. annoyed, yeah. no I don't do that I just work it out at my paid gig I just will throw it in there I usually don't throw in something I don't think of work but every now and then you hit or miss but I um, I don't go around and practice like that I'm just I don't know if I'm lazy or I'm just gifted one of the two but I just will like throw different stuff in because things happen that you want to talk about. Like right now, I'm on this big thing about, you know, my people going nuts for a goddamn chicken sandwich. Like, it's not even a meal. Like, you don't even get a drink with this shit and everybody's standing in line for a fucking chicken sandwich. I come from a fry your own chicken era, you know, like. So I talk about stuff that's in my set, but I might pepper it in with some relative shit that's going on so mm -hmm. so you're here i don't do it i don't do it like like everybody else you don't do it like everybody else but it seems so effortless do you have so much material stored that if there is something where you feel like a a, a, a bit isn't working that you can pull from that and salvage it and bring it to people standing standing yeah, I mean, my mind's always going like i thought of some material since we've been sitting here There you have it. So that is part two of the interview with Lou Nell. It's very interpersonal, yeah, this very particular good. one, where, yeah. where she talks about her hopes and aspirations and her desire to be, to go down or go up as one of the greatest yeah you know what i mean because that's what people want people yeah. want to be seen her recognized and appreciated yes. and be on situations where they will be seen well past the time yeah. that they are you know here on this planet and that's facts and so there's no, nothing that people can really do or change that right and that is she will be because she is Funny, funny, hilarious. She put in, she puts in the work. She puts in the work. Yes. Right. Yes. She just has it, and she has. I mean, you know. Yeah. And she was a very nice person. Very nice. Right. Yeah. So now, without further ado, we need to review Hustlers. Right. Hustlers, starring. Well, actually, Jennifer Lopez is. Sec, actually second billing on this even though she's actually being billed as the star but she's actually second billing to Constance Wu yes. right who's from the show um, on ABC uh huh and what's it called Fresh Off the Boat Fresh Off the Boat right you know that's just funny that that, that that would be a title Fresh Off the Boat because I didn't even really know who she was yeah you know yeah. Very no, popular not. show on ABC, highly rated. Highly rated? Yeah. Still on? Yes. 
Oh, okay, it's still on. Hmm. Yeah. It came on another the, season. Yeah, it started. It started at the same time that Blackish started. Correct. Yeah, it did. I think started. it started a little bit after Blackish. That's right. Black-ish it was, was the season great. afterwards. Yeah, right? kind of yeah, season cool. afterwards. But yeah. it's around yeah. kind of the same time, right? So we'll say that. You know, I've, I've never watched it. Just wasn't necessarily interesting. It doesn't mean that it's not good. Yeah, the just series, haven't watched. The series kicked off in 2015. Okay. Fresh off the boat. Fresh off the boat. There we go. Okay, so that's where she's from, people. So that that's might be why. She's What's going on to Tamika and Tanya? I see hey, Tamika. you guys chimed in. Hey, What's Tanya. going on with you? Good to see you. So we're reviewing Hustlers, uh, starring Constance Wu as Destiny, Jennifer Lopez as Ramona, Kiki Palmer, Palmer as Mercedes, Lily. I can't I can't read my own right here. Ryan Hart, Ryan Hart yeah. as Annabelle, Annabelle yeah. and Julia Stiles as Jennifer. You know, it's funny that they would cast Julia Stiles in this role. Do you remember back when Julia Stiles was the hot, hot late teen, early twenty actress coming in? And she got up there on the television and she said, I think she was in that Othello. Yeah, oh, was. that movie Oh yeah. with uh what's his face? Uh, Makai Piper. And she stood up there. I don't know what made it come out of her mouth. It must have been one of those racist ticks or whatever. But it came out of her mouth and she said, uh, on the screen with another black guy. And it seemed like overnight her career ended. She went from being the lead protagonist to being supporting cast and the next time you saw her was in the Julia Roberts movie where Julia Roberts was a teacher and she was one of the students and it was in the 1950s I can't oh. remember the name of the film but it was 1950s and Julia Roberts was a liberated thinking right. woman and she believed that women were more than going to school to just be secretaries after they got their degree that's what was happening in the 50s Women's, but anyway, that's another story for another time. But that was the next time you saw her. So here she is as the reporter. Now, you we were also in the film. Um, Lizzo, I was about to say supporting yeah, cast. Yeah, Lizzo and Cardi B. But there's another. Well, we, we're not going to spoil it because they have to go on the theater. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. See, there's, there's a, nice a cameo. Surprise. There's a cameo, yeah, yeah, right? Nice surprise. And it's a surprise in it, right? Right, so the supporting cast, let's go through the supporting cast. Okay, There's a few through, more people. Um, let's see. Madeline Brewer right, plays right. Dawn. She, she plays Dawn. Now, yeah. Dawn is a problem. Yeah. And she, but she, we're not going to give it We're not going to give it away, yeah. but she's a problem. And right? also, uh, supporting cast, Trace Lizett, uh, Met Towerly, Mercedes Rue, Frank Wiley, Brandon Kenner, Stephen Boyer, Devin Retray, John Glazer, and Roz Corral. That's right. So Mercedes Rue plays the house mom, right? So that's the uh, supporting cast. Okay, so let's go through this. Let's set the film up, right? I'm not going to give any spoilers because we're pretty much going through uh, the trailer, but I have to give it to you to set up to is the film dope or nope is the push to say that Jennifer Lopez should get an Oscar nod for this. Is this, is that justified, right? And so we're going to go through it real quick and talk about it. Okay, so Constant Wu portrays Destiny as though a fish out of water, right? Uncoordinated, uninterested to the male clients of the club. She portrays she portrays the character of Destiny as cunning and conniving. Right? So she openly plays this. It's, it's more like the expression on her face, her desire to get ahead. Yeah. And it seems by any means, right? right? Which then thus you should really watch a person who's like that, right? So the movie opens seven years later, 2014 is the aftermath of the situation and Destiny is being interviewed by a reporter played by Julia Stiles, right? Destiny is giving her account the story. 
The film is beautiful in how it introduces you to the world of the club. Though it doesn't really make the club the world. The, 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 unlike most films, which we get to when we talk about problems in the film, but unlike most films where the city will be a world or the where the person is, where, where they're inhabiting or where they're standing is the world, the club is really not the world. The world, in this case, to me, the is the, that's right, the, the women of the club. Yeah, so, the, so they succeeded in that. So you never really get the name of the club. Right. Right? right. You just know that it's a club, so it's just a space. It could have right. been, anyway, it could have been black box right. with some lights, with some flickering lights, and it could have told the story, even though the world is with the ladies, right? Yes. The ladies... Uh, so, so the club. So let me go back a little bit. The film is beautiful in how it introduces you to the world of the club, which are the ladies, the house mom portrayed by Mercedes Rule, the behind the scenes of of the stage, to under the table duplicity dealings of the club owner and security. Would you agree with that? I agree, hundred percent. Okay. So let's That's, go to the next one. Yeah, they do like an excellent job focusing on the characters. They're setting up what the world that they're within. Yeah, right? because like you said, the focus is not the club, it's the characters. It's the characters, right? So that's the world, right? And then Destiny, it's about her struggle to make money and her dramatic need, right? So after they introduce you and open you up to the ladies in the club and they introduce her to the club and her duck out of water or fish out of water narrative or role. Then you're introduced to her dramatic need after club hours, after being, uh, you've seen that in the previews, having to hand over percentages of money beyond what was supposed to be handed over. You saw that in the trailer, so that's no stretch or no no uh, giving away scene or no spoiler there, right? You're introduced to her dramatic need, which is taking care of her grandmother, right? right? And that is her dramatic need. So the film is beautiful in setting this up, right? So all of this happens in the first 10 to 15 minutes of the film. Beautifully written. That's the way scripts are supposed to be written. And by the 10th minute or by the 15th, page or the 10th page, yeah. the dramatic need is supposed to be there along with the initiating event. Which is what I can appreciate about the film because like I said previously, like 15, 20 minutes in, like if I'm not grabbed, I'm not interested in the film and I'm moving on to something else. So it, it immediately grabs you. You're like really, really interested in what's going on in the film, what's going on with the characters. And well you done. Know, and you know who the main yeah. protagonist yeah. is yeah. of the film. Yes. She's well drawn yep. and you see what her situation is now. Yes. So all of this happens in the first 10 to 15 minutes right. of the film and then you are introduced to the co-star of the film. Yes. Ramona, portrayed by Jennifer Lopez, right? And how do they do this? How do they do this? She shot dominant yeah. on stage, man drooling, money flying like it's being shot out of a money gun. And as she passes by uh, Destiny, she says something about, doesn't the money make you drool, right? And then, because really, Destiny is sitting there and right. she's looking she's at her. She's in awe. She is the total opposite right. of what she is in the club. She's hardly able to get interest from men. Right. She she doesn't seem to really have any rhythm in right. dancing. And she's sitting there looking at Jennifer Lopez and, and uh, well, Ramona. Yeah. And as she walks past, as Ramona walks past Destiny, she says, doesn't the money make you drool? Right? right, so then she looks after her, right. and then next thing you know, 
This is where the relationship begins. Yes. Destiny it's follows awesome. Ramona to the roof right. and is warmed by the fur Ramona is wearing. Right. This is where you see Destiny's conniving and cunning behavior right. where it comes into play. And it Ramona. takes definitely mm-hmm. takes off. Right. Ramona not oblivious to it takes her under her wing and right. it becomes a mother daughter type relationship. Yeah. Ramona showing for yeah. her growth. The dialogue is great. It is. And from there you see um their relationship builds from that moment. And um, definitely Ramona is the queen of the club. Right. Definitely. Now, let's get on pacing. Okay. Let's get on pacing. So we gave you the setup. That's the setup. That's the first 15 minutes. And then the right. film kicks off from right. there when you're introduced to Jennifer Lopez's character, Ramona. Yes. Right? So you get the dramatic. All of it set up in the first 10 to 15 minutes. Yes. Beautifully done. Pacing. Yep. Excellent. Uh, you get to introduce to the supporting cast yes. members, right? Kiki. Right, Kiki, Kiki Palmer, Palmer, right? Right. Uh, Annabelle. Yeah. Okay, so look. She plays with Mercedes. Mercedes, right. So yeah. then you get, yeah, you meet Annabelle. Annabelle. Well, you Annabelle comes in the film later. a little bit later in yeah. the film as another supporting cast Diamond, member. Diamond. Right. Right. Cardi B. Cardi B. Yeah. Right. Mercedes, Lizzo, right. just like all of the dancers. They do like a great job introducing you to each girl and you get a taste of each of their personalities That's right. within like minutes. Within minutes. It's great. Now, during this time, the pace of the film is fantastic. Yes. It's moving as you watch how every piece, the club, the house mother, the yes. dancers, and the clientele work to get everyone paid. Yeah. Right, yeah. it just works. It's a it's a great gelling, a great telling of a story. The edit yeah. is excellent on it. The music right? is great. The music is great. The costume is great. Now the pacing of the film is still good during the situation that happens, right? Yeah. Which people will call people know about it. So this is not a thing. The Great Recession happens, right? Not the Great Depression. But the Great Recession, because this is modern time here, right? But the pace, the early part of the film, fantastic. Yeah. But then it is a constant, unrelenting visual of taking the Wall Street guys for a ride. And you've seen this in the trailer, so that's no, no uh, mystery. Taking the the Wall Street guys for a ride to the bank. It slowed down. There was 10 to 20 minutes produced in the edit just to make the film longer, I thought, okay. right? Which could have been left on the cutting room floor. It dragged on. Well, see, that's what you say, but I don't think I mean, it, it dragged on. Because I, I like, enjoyed seeing like the relationship between the dancers. Because they were a family. It, no, no, no. It, it wasn't that. That that part right there that led. Oh, that okay, so you were the situation. Okay, well that that was a great telling of the story. That was great, for me. But, but it was it was the pacing on that. They just did it to make the the film get the longer. Point across. I, I think they made made it longer to make the film qualify. So how would you? No, no, no. Let me finish. It, okay. it makes the film qualify okay. for uh, for. The Oscar season, so that part right there in there, that that was dragging, right? The relationship between the women before okay. the big boom happens, okay. that kind of started to bring the pacing back up. Okay. But there was a part in there where it was like it was just long in the tooth, and it was just ridiculous. Okay, right? Detail. It was no, it was no laugh. It was just right behind, right behind. Yeah. It was just too much. And we and we hadn't got to the big gloom yet, okay. but we get there finally. And here's where we see the jealousy, du- duplicity, mo- motive of right. well, destiny, right? Well, it Problems with the film. Number one problem with the film to me was the Me Too editing. Oh my god. It was me to no editing. Was not in no this me to editing. Yes, yes, yes. It was me to editing. Very much so. Me to 
editing where you're, 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 this is a film about strippers. This, this they were film. empowering themselves. No, this, this is a film about duplicitous, lying strippers, right? This is what this is about. And the main, none of the main characters, did you ever see them do what strippers do? You never saw them naked at all throughout the whole picture. And the scenes where they were there with the men, beautifully shot though. I have to give I have to give the the, the cinematographer his props and being able to tell this story as Artistic if it was as guys. if it was being shown on T V only. So there, there's a problem with well, you know, but the secondary the, the and the extra hustlers. No, no, the extra. What are they called strippers? Listen, listen. listen the so extras, they don't have to be on the stage stripping. They, they were strippers. called hustlers. That's what this about. They so were hustlers. They were in a strip band. club, and so the extras, okay. the extras in the back had nothing. You know, they showed okay. them new, but none of the yeah. principals right. did you see. Now, to me, this was like J Lo's. Strip tease, you know, Demi Moore, oh, you know, women of a certain age, okay. then they get them up there and they have them. Uh, they came about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, strip tease. Much better you know, than so, 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 so this is, you know, like J Lo strip tease, okay. Hustler strip tease at the time was a good movie for its time period. For period. Right, for its period. And this is J Lo strip tease, right? Now, problems with the film. The Me Too editing, that, that's one thing. Right, me too editing. How are you gonna be? What do you mean by me too editing? Meaning that they're not going to, you know, there's no no longer a casting couch, so unfortunately there will be no uh, gratuitous nudity. Okay, so right. What's I mean, the which, which this is a strip tease movie. No, so it's you a would wrestler. expect you would expect that at least the main protagonist would be and not secondary okay. people, right? But it didn't, it didn't matter because the story was that good that you could bypass that. But if you think, because there was someone that was sitting in front and it was a woman mm -hmm. and she was talking, she was kind of disturbing the film a little bit. Okay. And she was looking at her friend saying, I'm out of here, hit this. I thought this was a stripper movie. Yes, yeah, she did say that. And I'm like, this she is thought this, she thought you talking talking about? it was a stripper movie. So, oh, female, a woman came into the theater expecting to see tickle bitties. Well then she should go to the strip club. Women went to <laughs> see tickle bitties and behind and if you saw tickle bitties and behind you must have been watching a movie, a whole nother movie because that is not in this picture whatsoever. Well, it is. You do see Now it when a woman sits up in the theater talking about threatening to leave because this is But that was a great well, this is not. I guess maybe this I should is start not, my review. No, no, wait a minute. This is not a a. But it was a story. It's a great representation of what Hustlers. was happening back then. It was. It was, it was not called strip during club. that period. That's just like Players Club. No, no, wait a no, no, it's a no, great no, no, film. No, 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 but no, it was a story no, line. No, stop, stop it now. Well, let's call it Players it's Club. Great story let's line. Let's call Players Club and Ice Cube directorial. Debut. Right. Told a story. Great. It video. told a story, but right. the protagonist okay. and the antagonist okay. and the secondary characters okay. were all doing what strippers do. Right. And they were all shown okay. doing what strippers do. But it was called which Players is, Club. And which is uh there was nudity right. within the picture, right? But not so, in the could consider this like character. a you consider this like an art house thing. Well husband. Well well not not even that because in art house films right. there's more nudity in that. Uh, uh um Orson Welles had that right. art art film where he had the woman the woman was naked throughout the whole thing. Ninety five percent of the film. That was an art film. Hustlers, this is not an art film. This is, a, is based this on this is a hybrid a true story. This is a hybrid, loosely based first, true story uh, on, on, on a, a New York New York Magazine article, right? Right. And it is a hybrid Me Too, first of the Me Too edits that are coming out 
for film. You know, that's, that's what this is, right? Oh, yeah, I said that, right? Okay, well, so the film for all husbands, husbands, it's not called strip club. But it's in the strip club, so you know you will see what happens. The hustling, hustling is hustling when you go back there and take them to the champagne room where there's no sex in the champagne room. Well, as, people want to see that as, 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 as the late, as the late that. great If you're Gerald sitting Laverne, in the theater to see the money. film, you're there to see the film, the story. Well, man, as the great late Gerald Levert sang mm -hmm. on Chris Rock's song, there's no there's no sex in the oh, champagne, champagne room, right? <laughs> right? Okay, so that's the main that's one of the main problems with the film is okay. the Me Too editing. The pacing. It starts out good, it ends good, but it's just that doldrum right there in the middle. Okay. Characters are and another problem is characters are one or two dimensional. Due to most likely what the principals held back in the uh, New York Magazine article. You know, they had to make themselves look good. They didn't know if, I don't know if they were passed any more, um, any more charges possibly, any more prosecutions possibly. But they wanted to try to probably re mm -hmm. rehabilitate their their reputation, so certain things were left out. Right? Well, they said the film was shot in a month, so they and normally it takes months to no, shot in a month. So within a month, so they it was well done to have been shot within a month. So as far as like the characters, the two, I mean, uh, three dimensions. I mean, but it's all it's, it's what's in the script. The script was written however many months ago or however long it took before it got became got the green light to be filmed. So the script was there. So we're talking about the script and how the characters are one uh, two-dimensional. Destiny seems to tell the story to be self-serving as though the dramatic need uh, even though the I dramatic was out. Well, well, wait, even though the dramatic need was drawn even for Jennifer Lopez's character, okay. what drove the characters were not fully flushed out, okay. leaving the two or one dimensional aspect of the character. So what really okay. drove them okay. were not was not pushed into the film. So that probably cut on the floor like they didn't show enough of their personal lives. They showed some personal life, but it was not like, you know, it, it just didn't, it, it left some gaps there, which that's a problem. That's a, uh, a, a cinematic or thematic problem within the film. But saying all that, saying all that, J-Lo acted her butt off in this movie. J-Lo was totally believable as the Ramona character from being on the strip, being on the pole and showing the pole yeah. dance, as we call it. She is totally believable in this film. So what do you want to say about the film before we get into breaking down? Is it dope or no? Well, or is it worth I don't know. I feel that, like I said, like great cinematography, the music was the acting was on point. Um, costume and design was great because you saw they broke up the years. You know, so What's going on to Patrick Jones, uh, DJ Centipede chimed in. Michael DJ Elliott, Jamaica Love Wisdom, she Hello. chimed in. It was just, it was interesting. It was a great film. It kept my interest from beginning to end. And I have to say, I mean, J-Lo, she killed it. Like, you know. She was totally believable. She was extremely believable in this film, right? And her character was, was likable, you know? So you saw how uh, Destiny was drawn to her character. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And so um, Jennifer, Jennifer Lopez killed it. Just like, for me, her, in her film, Enough. Right, mm -hmm. she killed it, and it's Selena. She killed it, but in this film, 
it's up there with those two for me. What's going on to Kells? I see he chimed in. Kells, yes. McCoy. McCoy, yeah. So this whole Oscar buzz about J-Lo mm -hmm. for her uh, portrayal in this film is completely believable. I mean, because Jennifer Lopez, she killed it. I mean, you don't even, watching the film, you forget that you're it's watching Jennifer, Jennifer Lopez. You're watching Ramona in this film. You are. Ramona Vega. Yeah. And she did an excellent job. That's right. And though Constance Wu had top billing, the Oscar, but she she outshines her. Yeah, in Jennifer this Lopez film. is clearly the right. star. She's the star of the film. And right. Oscar, but I don't know if they're gonna wanna uh uh give her co-star. Thus she would be leading actress or will she be I mean I don't know will because she be supporting? Kiki, Kiki Palmer could be supporting because she did a great job, her character too. Right? Mm -hmm. So but, but Jennifer Lopez but for me is the, is the star is the of the star. Film. So she should get they should be co leading and if they both get nominated for the same film, right. it shouldn't be supporting, right? Oh no, Jay Lo should right. be supporting. She should be that should be for best acting. Mm -hmm. Best yeah, actress best actor, is what they'll yeah. say. Right. Best actress. Right. She did a great job. She she'll get the Oscar nod though. Definitely. A lead leading actress. Yeah. I think so. I think yeah, so. Right, too. right. If you're looking for Cardi B, well You get a few minutes. Not so much. But when you I get saw more it, of her on Cardi her B. Instagram. Right. Then you get in the film. But when I course. saw Cardi B acting, well, when I saw Cardi B, I was like, that's Cardi B. So I'm like, is she acting or is it just, but she I mean, it know. was believable. She just, it was believable. She was playing herself. Baby. No, no, no. You know, I mean, no, I'm I saying just, great, good, good theory. No, but, but I, yeah. disagree, I disagree that she was playing herself. She was acting. Okay. What? Because, because. Her, I could tell by the timing okay. that she was doing that she was acting. She wasn't just blurting it out. Right. It was it's, it's a way in acting where you throw the expression and okay. then you do the lines. Right. And her timing right. was down on that. And though it was about you know something okay. that she could relate to, okay. she still to me was acting and it was good. And if you think that you want to see her. Uh, like you see her on her Instagram, you're not. Well, see, that's why I thought that. And that's why it's good Me Too editing. Yeah, well, no, it's not a Me Too. <laughs> it's Me Too editing. But the reason why, uh, for me, I yeah, think she was says, playing. Greetings um, from my husband, Bishop, and I. Oh, We're hello. enjoying the show. Thank you. May Greetings. God bless you and prepare your work. Thank you. Thank you. May God you bless as well. You also. Um, when I say that she was playing herself, meaning. Um, she was hilarious. Cardi B's character was hilarious. Um, she was, um, her personality made you say, I'm interested in that character. Just like in real life, right? Because right. she's, she's outgoing, she's funny. But I think that she so could. So that's how her character was. I think that she could get support. Because I think that even with her, on her time on screen, okay. right, showed her acting ability and I think that she could go on for supporting but if you were looking for you thought that Cardi B was gonna be there and she was gonna be on stage rapping and she was gonna be naked or like like on Instagram no but you'll see you'll see but it, it's good they all did a good job but it's Lizzo. good it's good it's me too no no wait a minute this one's hilarious also our character was there's a but. scene in there and if you know Lizzo, she but, had but, her flute. We're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna uh, talk about it. But that that flute is is amazing. She's her talented. ability to play that flute is amazing. You know, She's talented. and so you, you're gonna enjoy you have to go this, see film. this film. You're gonna enjoy this film. So yeah. so let's go through it real quick. Okay, okay. cinematography. First of all, right. making the world the right. women. And not necessarily the club. Right. And new, new to it, right? Because right. the club was so ambiguous. Yeah. It was like, like I said, it could have been black box, and it could have still told the story. And you would have been right there, which I guess that would be more of a theater right. type yeah, of I guess so. trope, right? Where it doesn't matter what, where you're at, you're right. it, you're focused on the world yeah. that the actor is making. Like fences. 
like fences, right? And so, yeah, so the cinematography there, beautiful. Right. The way that they introduced Jennifer Lopez, the Great way they shot the first 10 to 15 minutes, then they introduced right. you to the initiating the event, which right. was Jennifer Lopez, right. this character of Ramona, right. uh, starting this engine and getting it going after prelims, beautifully done. Yeah. The, the, the storyline of introducing the characters, which all went into the first 10 to 15 minutes. Great. Yes. Uh, the costuming, great. Yes. And it was a lot more costuming you would have thought it would have been because this is a film. Anyway. This isn't Players Club. It's if, you, if you're going to think you're going to see Players Club or Striptease, what was that, Showgirls? You're not. Because it's called Hustlers, so okay. you saw the hustling, which was the best part of the film. I'm sorry. Right. But, but in Players Club, wasn't the girl in the end, wasn't the meaning of Players Club, Players Club was that the women in there became the players? And it, I mean, in the end, so it's like Hustlers, Players Club. Okay. It's still the same. Hustlers. Right, right. So you and they the showed the hustle. Ass, you know, yeah, you saw the hustle. They put a lot of thought in the it, hustle. And won't. Quite interesting. But you won't see a lot of, but anyway, people. So if you go in there like it, when a woman says, but anyway, so the ability to make the story interesting with the costume, you know, uh, beautifully done, which I guess that because it was written by a woman, right? Right. And I read that, that, they, that they're trying to pull back and try to put the genie in the bottle a little bit and yeah. say that you can still be a great sexy fam. without right. having all of it. So, I mean, it's all of it's the entertaining, but it's an entertaining film all yeah. the same, right? right? So, the cutting on it was good. Beginning, end, middle, they put extra in there for it to qualify. That, that's, that's what I'm saying there. Donald Randell just chimed back in. What's going on, yeah. Donald? Yeah, Dolomite Records representative, uh, the owner of Dol Dolomite Records. We've got some announcements coming up, so stay tuned for that. All right, so we went through all that. The, the dramatic to the comedic parts in the film, the, the lightheartedness in the film, the way that they describe the relationship between what I would still call a John and the woman beautifully executed early on. Long in the tooth in the middle, okay, right? Other than that, uh, the, the color of the film, yeah. the use of lighting in the film to yeah. tell the story, beautifully done, beautifully done, right? So, what do you want to say about the film before we get to the ratings? No, I mean, like I said, well done. Great acting, beautiful cinematography. Um, the music was great. Like the music really grabbed me. Like in each of the scenes and as the years went on, the different songs played and people in the audience were feeling the music too. You know, so it was really nice. Well and there's, done. A, there's, there's a cameo in it. Oh yeah, great. That was and, a nice and, surprise. And it's gonna be a nice shocker touch. to you when you see nice it. Nice touch. And right, so yeah. what would you rate the film? Definitely a 10. Like I said, Jennifer Lopez, I mean, she killed it. I was watching Ramon Vega throughout the whole film, so that's just great acting. Okay, I have to break mine up, okay. right? Because my, my overall score, right, is, is a little bit different. And, 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 and it's like it is, okay? So, 10 for introducing the characters. Beautifully done, Beautiful. right? That middle portion that was the dog room, I gotta get out of three, right? So the so it's a character-driven film. Yeah. So all together, putting those two together, I got to give it a seven. Okay. No, it's an entertaining Not film. An eight. It's no, I'm giving it a seven because okay. that that ten to fifteen minutes, maybe twenty minutes in between, where you were sitting there like, oh my god, like, and it just slows to a halt. They could have left that, but again, they put it in there to qualify. All right, so it had to be in there, and that was something that had to sacrifice it. But for that reason, the the 
It's a character-driven film. The world are the women, and then and, and somewhat the Johns and right. the supporting characters. Right. Uh, Great the dialogue. Use, the use of the police officers in the last third nice. of the film, yeah. beautifully done. The dialogue you know, was beautiful. The dialogue. Too. The use yeah. of using the reporter to tell the story nice. in the later one third of the film. Right. We left that out. Right. That's good, but and so that's what picks it up and redeems it. But I have to give it a seven because it was too slow in the middle. That dropped it down to a three, but it's a ten for the character drivenness of it, which makes it a seven right here. So, so if we're talking, you would give the film a B. That would be a B. No, a seven is always a C, ain't it? Well, okay. 80, well, you 80, said 10 80 for, is a B, 90. I mean, you said 10 for the acting. 7 is a C. 70 is a C. Okay. 80 is a B. 90 to 100 right. is an A. A plus. Right? So what's a C? Well, I give it a 10. But, but entertainment-wise, entertainment-wise, I give it a 10. Structure of how the script was edited down in the edit. It's a set. Well, that sounds. Huh? Oh, yeah. I would like to give it a ten. It was a good scene. Okay, right. Well, one scene specifically was a great scene. It was artistic, and you'll see it when the the dance scene. Well, when when they're no, well, together, you'll see, you'll Ramona see. and uh, Destiny. You'll see. You'll see. And um, you'll see. that was well done, you'll artistic, see. beautifully shot. Um, okay, people. Kind of remind me like of a burlesque style. Well done. Oh yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. That was if, nice. If, 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 if you're going to see burlesque, this is in the champagne room. There is no burlesque. It was anyway, artistic. people, it's just a, now, it the, it, it, oh, it's an art house. It, 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 it's a. It turns into a early. But anyway, people. Well, for me, the film was called Hustlers, and it was all about the hustle. Great. And part of the hustle is using your body as an instrument. Just ask models. They use their body as an instrument all Great the time. Film. But anyway, people, so listen. This is our show, and we do what the, or we want to do. So listen. Coming up again is part two for those who missed part two of the exclusive Linnell yes. interview. We are showing it again right now, and then after we come back from that, we're going to do is talking that Proud to be black, just a hustle, just a hustle. Not a hustle, but just a hustle. Okay, people, so right now, we're getting ready to give you again the exclusive part two of the Lunel interview on the film review, right? So we're gonna give you part two of that. All right? So it goes a little bit like this, and we'll be back. In a second. The original bad girl with comedy. The original bad girl with comedy. Uh, and so, if you know, I'm glad if people know my name. I want to make a difference. I want to go down as a legend. I want to be one of the best that ever did it. I want people to remember me. Mm -hmm. You know, so it feels it feels great, of course. So you're at <laughs> so you're at Kimmo Comedy Club yes. here in Las Vegas, right there. You right. guys will take a shot of it, I'm sure. Yeah, we will. About your movie, why I made the curator's pick of the Hollywood French community, unity, heart, 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 good luck, good luck. Crazy, easy, easy. This is another great episode of the film review. Hey everybody, this is Lunell, the original bad girl of comedy. I'm here at the Link Promenade in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, and you're watching the film review. Magical people, and I always wanted to do a period piece like Shaft or Coffee, where you go back to wearing your platforms again and having afros and bell bottoms and shit. So that's what this is. So it's just an amazing piece of film footage. Craig Brewer is the director. He liked black people. He directed Hustle, Hustle and Flow, and, Flow. <laughs> and this, and Coming to America too. Mm -hmm. So, um, but what is her? But what is her character like? Is she a support for Rudy? Well, I don't want to get away too okay, much, okay. but I'm just saying she's his aunt, and um, she gave him the seed money to make his very first album. So she's very influential in his life. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the, uh, Z9 used to have out a documentary on Dolomite, just to stay on this for a second. And he talked about how doors were shut to him in the, in the very beginning. But his film coming out is the blueprint for so many films. The, the techniques that they used are, is, for, is used in so many his films time, today. He was ratchet with it. You know, he only had a certain amount of money. He didn't have a big you know, studio behind him, big budget like that. So he made do with what he could, and he made film. And now look, we're you know honoring him, you know, all these years later. What he did mattered. It mattered to black people. It mattered to us. May not be for everybody, you know. That's fine too. But for us, he's a uh, urban legend. He's an icon. All the pimps and the players looked up to Rudy Ray Moore. I don't know too many black people our age that doesn't know. The signified monkey, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it's part of our culture. It's good to celebrate it, you know. Good to celebrate him. Now, how does it feel personally for you to be gaining this acclaim after so many years grinding it out? Well, I've never, you know, like ever since I left Oakland, I've it's been the same. I've always been popular. I've always been popular amongst the regular folk, you know, um, more people are knowing my name now, you know, there's a little bit more money now, not, you know, stratospheric money like these boys is getting, so my lifestyle at home haven't changed much yet, but, um, you know, as long as people are starting to know my name, not just my look or my face, that's that girl, that's that girl, they called me Cat Williams for like five years, you know, just because they associated me with Cat. Uh, and so, it, you know, I'm glad that people know my name. I want to make a difference. I want to go down as a legend. I want to be one of the best that ever did it. I want people to remember me, mm -hmm. you know, so it feels, it feels great, of course. And the polish that you have. I often speak on how uh, comics and entertain black entertainers in particular go through the chicken circuit, uh, uh, the chitlin circuit, excuse me. And they go through, and by the time they get to film, by the time they get to television, they are polished and even more, even more, uh, even more interesting on screen than their white counterparts that are up there. Like take when you played the cashier in, in uh, uh, a, star uh, a Star Is Born. Born. When when you. To me, you stole that scene. My wife and I were sitting in the theater, and you stole the scene. That's just because you know no, me. No, 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 no. people who don't know me, I didn't steal no scene. No, no, no. Th they may not be admitting that you stole the scene, but you sitting there stoic as the cashier, it made me say, I would like to follow that storyline and get off of the Star is well, Born story. You, you, need to, you will be very happy with Dolomite because I cut my nails, I wore a wig, you know, I really wanted to, and I felt like, feel like Eddie's aunt. I mean, I knew uh, Charlie way more than I have interacted with Eddie, but me and Eddie already had a relationship before we started working, but to actually work with him and have it on film where my kid and everybody in generations can see it, it's an honor, and two Eddie Murphy films in one year, and this comeback year is amazing, but, um, I just, you know, I love my aunts, and my aunts were very influential in my life, and I just pulled from that, and, you know, I think that me and Eddie, uh, they say we had chemistry, like, but that's real love. And that's, like, that's, love that's why coming to America, too, you're in it. Can you give us news about the character that you play? <laughs> well, no. No. I can't. But I will say that it's one of the happiest sets I've ever worked on. Tracy Morgan is a joy to be around every day and a miracle. Um, you got Arsenio and Arsenio and Eddie are buddies. And, you know, my boy Rodney Perry, we came up through the trenches together. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful way to go to work, you know. Okay, so I only drink at work. Yes. Right? Is that saying that your work is stand up or are you speaking to also the everyday person that may have a I flask just happen to have one <laughs> right here okay Lunell I only drink at work I only I'll drink at work this copy. And, and, and this is a CD this is not a DVD 
You can buy it on my website, heylunel.com, H-E-Y-L-U-E-N-E-L-L.com, or you can download it on, you know, iTunes and Spotify and all that stuff. This is just a CD that I've recorded live in a club, you know, not unlike Kimmel's, and um, just talk, you know, just talk about stuff that applies to everybody, you know, relationships and kids and weight and money and college and all that. So there you go. Oh, I, I appreciate this. Enjoy. We're going to be laughing, car. and then we're going to be coming up here to see you do. in the car on the way home. Okay, so do you like other comics? go to smaller clubs to work out new material before you do a stand-up show like uh, Easily uh, Annoyed Easily? No, Easily Annoyed no, Easily Comedy annoyed, yeah. No, I don't do that. I just work it out at my paid gig. I just will throw it in there. I usually don't throw in something I don't think of work. But every now and then you hit or miss, but I um, I don't go around and practice like that. I'm just I don't know if I'm lazy or I'm just gifted, one of the two. But I just was like throw different stuff in because things happen that you want to talk about. Like right now, I'm on this big thing about you know my people going nuts for a goddamn chicken sandwich. Like it's not even a meal. Like you don't even get a drink with this shit, and everybody's standing in line for a fucking chicken sandwich. I come from a fry your own chicken era, you know, like. So I talk about stuff that's in my set, but I might pepper it in with some relative shit that's going on. So, mm-hmm. so you're here. I don't do it. I don't do it like like everybody else. You don't do it like everybody else, but it seems so effortless. Do you have so much material stored that if there is something where you feel like a a, a, a bit isn't working, that you can pull from that and salvage it and bring it to people standing standing yeah, I mean, up my mind's always going like i thought of some material since we've been sitting here so there we go people so that is it in a nutshell again that is episode two part two of the interview with Lou Right? And of course, you have to pick up Lunel. I only drink at work. I only drink at work. Available on heylunel.com. Heylunel.com. Now, people, the question, the question for tonight. Here, let me start right here for our background content. Right here, the question for tonight is that talking proud to be black just a hustle? Not a hustle, but just a hustle. When I say hustle. H-U-S-S-L-E. I'm speaking of the dance. It's just a dance. It's a dance to get people to to believe in what you're saying. It's a hustle. It's just a dance. It's not even in the great category of being hustle or hustler. You're just, it's just hustle. Is it just a hustle saying that you're pro, that you're proud to be black. What does it mean to be proud to be black? What does that mean? And what type of actions would you do or what type of steps would you do to represent being proud to be black? For those who want to chime in, 213-943-3358. 213-943-3358. So off of that question, I came up with my top 10 reasons that proud to be black talk is just a hustle. For some people. For some people. Yeah, because not all. It's just a hustle. It means that you're dancing. 
you got your dancing shoes on. Anything that sounds good, just to, well, let's go through for that moment. For that moment, it sounds good. I don't know if I should start with number 10, but I have these in explicit order. Okay. Should I start with 10 or should I start with 1? Start 10 and work 10, in. okay, let me find my my 10 paper here. Oh All right, gosh. number 10, yes, I have it out on paper. Okay, number 10. Number 10, this might explain it all. We are rooted in plantation religion. Not, we are not reading a part of the book, Bible, Quran, Torah, which uh, spreads the message of liberation. But we stay in the books which deal with keeping us under meritorious manumission. Which I want to get to the definition of meritorious manumission because it's higher up on the list, so we'll get to that. But you believe, the person, we who believe in, we are rooted in the plantation religion, we who are rooted there are basically following the teaching of the slave master to keep black people from tearing up some shit. Let's just be clear. Tear up some shit to get this stick corrected, right? right? So number 10. What do you have to say about that? What do you think about that? I mean... Okay, she says, okay, okay. Number nine. Number nine. We plan... We plain old, listen now, we plain old, just don't give a fuck as long as we can turn up. Number nine. We just plain old don't give a F unless we can turn up. All right? If it's something about weed or drinking ball, sometimes food, we'll show up for the party. For hard work beyond how hard we work for the man or Caucasians. No, we just got to turn up and leave hard work until Monday morning. Right? So if it's hard, so I'm not saying that we don't work hard. I'm saying I'm saying that we are not willing to work hard after Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturday and Sunday. If we get some turn up time, we ain't got time to be talking about something else. It's hard work. All right? So, I'm not saying we don't work hard. We just don't work hard. We don't worry about working hard on Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturday and Sunday for the man and not necessarily worry about working hard for yourself. To, for your of, people. For your people. That's what it is. Okay, number eight. This is very, this is very important. Relying on the older generation to have all of the answers. Number eight, relying on the older generation to have all of the answers, right? How could they have all the answers when we are in the state we are in right now? Right. The older generation not what the older generation not willing to pass the torch right. or have someone in the wings to be next up. Obama is a perfect example. President Obama is a perfect example of that. We elected President Obama and he did not have anyone in the wings to step forward to continue the push of black people taking their rightful place in this country. Now, some people say the presidency is a is nothing but a puppet position, whatever. But you didn't have the people in place to keep it going. There was disjointedness there. And then once he got his, it appears, appearances. Once he got his, then he was willing to go ahead and revert back to then talking about and pushing Hillary Clinton instead of having someone in the wings to come up and take the place. That's a perfect example. He's a perfect example of that. No one black did he groom to be next to keep the next
next level of hope and change okay. gone. And maybe that's because he didn't come from that. He was on an island um, of his own, right? He didn't come up within a black community, so he, he didn't have maybe he didn't do it because he didn't have like the village type mentality because he didn't grow up um, under black culture. But at so the same, but at he, the same time, though the the. the people that he put around him right it seemed to be a multicultural situation not a diverse situation but a multicultural situation and right. you mean none of those women that he had in his cabinet right. could he have groomed and gotten behind to push to keep the well maybe uh, let, that wasn't his thought dynasty. process though so so then so then his thought so, process then was then to be pretty okay. much like the older generations. I got mine. Now that I got mine, just just from what I can see, it's what I what I can see. Right. I can't really say what it is, but right. just from what I can see, right. it was I got mine. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got to get yours. Right. Right? And right. What, what's that song by uh, Tupac and MC Free? I got to get mine. Right. You got to get yours. Right. I got to get mine. You got to get yours. Get right. yours. Right? Right. So, I mean, that's what we're looking at here, right? right. So that's number eight. Right. And if he comes from the lineage or not, if he comes from mixed lineage, a lot of people did. If he, can, if he came from being around predominantly but it's white not just people. Mixed in, I know, I know, I know, it's ADLS, I, 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 American Descendants of Slavery. This is true. Which is totally different. It's totally different, right? Right. So not only is it that, but then also he, he's not from the ADOS ADOS lineage, but he was in Chicago and he ran and was in the community as a community organizer. As, a job. as if as a job. he were from ADOS, and so he heard the problems. He went to uh, 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 what's his name, Wright's church. But then he denounced the, it. But he denounced it to keep going forward, right? But he went to the church. And he's married to ADOS, so he's heard these concerns. His daughters, no matter what he is, okay. they are ADOS. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Or, or one half, but okay. still, they're going to be pushed out into society like that, no matter how much. Some people do what feels good at their moment. Doesn't okay, specifically. Okay, that's that. my exact my point. So that's right. why. Are you really proud to be black, or is it just something to say? It's just a gloss. Oh, it's just shuffling your feet. Right. There we go. So now we're getting into the point. We're breaking it down. Okay, number seven. Can't seem to get off the hamster wheel. And that is exactly what it is. The hamster wheel. Emotions wrapped up in what other people think. That the same old tropes, the same old tropes were dropped. We've got to do, be her. I can't even read my own writing right now. This is, this is from the, the tropes that were dropped. Okay. If a white person reports, okay, that's it. It's the same old tropes that are being dropped. If a white person reports that a black person has done something, if the news has reported that a black person has done something, we fall for the same old tropes and black people say, oh, I can't do that. I can't go there. I can't support that. They did it. They did it. They did it, and you automatically go along with it because you would rather be under meritorious manumission, which is coming, which is coming, which is going to get a definition. Listen, perfect example of that is Sharon and TC barbecue crib. Okay, right. When that situation happened, where it was just grease, it was just grease. Right. I got from her firsthand right. about people who. Were questioning, calling, questioning. I don't know. My people don't want to come up there. And uh, the people who are questioning all that, and some of those same people right now, some of the same people 
Did I see full, full, full in over there? And then what happened when uh, Miss Michelle and I and then you when we were at the event at CC's and I got on her live and I said, Grease? It was just Grease? Yeah, we all And he can say, if, if Massa, Massa say, don't go, you know, I can't go. I said that. Yeah. I said, what? Keep on going. Something, one of the very people that she talked to me about, asked me about it. And I said, keep going. And she, he asked me about it before I got it from her mouth. Yeah. Right? And he asked me about it. And yeah. I said, keep going. The, 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 why is it just grease? Right. It ain't roaches. It ain't rats. It ain't right. none of that. just grease. But we are so soon to jump off of our own. Just because. based on what white media says. That's right. And just be proud to know that you stood with her during that That's period. Right. Stood solid with her and she and she knew it and she you know, we talked about it right. till the very end. The so very there was end. never any wishy washy with it. See, we so, can't seem to get off the hamster wheel. That's one part of the hamster wheel. The other hamster wheel is Halloween is coming up. Okay. And you know that the white, some Somebody white gonna have black they face. gonna have on black face, some white entertainer, some some white college student, some everyday white person's gonna have on uh, black face. They gonna put it they, on the dog. They gonna, they gonna put. <laughs> they gonna put it all over the news. Then they are gonna have the black talking heads come on and say, "Well, how disgraceful!" And that person needs so sensitivity insane. training. It's the same thing every year. You can just see it coming and it's building and everything. Just like when they say Donald Trump is a oh, we knew he was. So I mean most are. Right. Most are. So it's not that they're trying to imitate us. Right. It's something that is in their pale underbelly that is coming out. Right. It is a jealousy or an envy of that which they can't be, which is coming out. Right? They still listen to the music, they buy the music. If we were in control of the of the industry actually where the check was going hundred percent or ninety percent to us and ten percent to them, to, to the people who distribute, then it would be even better because hey, you still buy the music, go ahead and do that. But the point is we got to learn to get off the hamster wheel just when that every Halloween. Just say, okay, next. Don't next. like put that energy towards that's their pale underbelly, that's all. They need sensitivity training. Anybody who says they need sensitivity training, they haven't been studying. Like, like really, do we continue to need this training, you know, for the officers? Or whenever someone does something racist, I mean, are we over this? Well, we need to give them training. See, I mean, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be better like a, to dismantle that Have people system? realized that that's kind of like game? It's game. I mean, it's the same thing, and the people get up there and they do it instead of saying, well, what the real problem is, is that they were patty brokers and they were brought in to kill or to maim or to control those, to take them back to the plantation, and afterwards to keep black people from congregating together to make plans. And that's what they've done, and then it's just uh, morphosized and has become worse and over time but that's what it is so you want to go back you got to kill it all from the root and start from the beginning but we're going to get to that too but number six not willing to be educated this should be number one but it's number six it's in a good place for it most people don't want to read or research uh, because they are glad to be seen as Okay. They're glad to be seen as okay. less than human. Now, I didn't say that we couldn't read. Okay. I said that they don't like to read, to research, because that goes back into one of the later numbers talking about the struggle, rather to be better to turn up than to work, right? right. They are in a state of monkey see, okay. a human do. Monkey wants to do right? right. Studying and researching on how to do something right. is the key to everything. You're having troubles. Let me help you. Oh my gosh! 
from the yeah, right, right. Knowing how to do something, actually having studied it, right, and studying on how to execute it is what sometimes we lack because we are we feel better. Some of us feel better to be considered less than what we are. You know what I'm saying? No original ideas. People, some want to do what they feel is easy by doing the same thing that they see. Right? A human makes it look easy. What the problem is, is number six, we can't see full realization of our potential if we don't educate ourselves on what we want to do. You know, I was just looking at my grade point average. We were having a meeting. And I was just looking at my grade point average. And it is something to be proud of, let me tell you. Because I put the work in, right? I put the work in, you know, as a human being. And when I tell you, I outworked my Caucasian counterparts. I'm going to tell you, because the Caucasian counterparts have the good old boys club to get them in place. But what do we have? We have our minds, our third eye, our cognitive and our imagination sides of the brain, put it all together and then you have it to be able to succeed. But if you don't want to do that, then you're going to be in the same place, trying to do the same things that everybody else. How, how many ideas have we had? And we see people just doing the same, trying to do the same thing. And it's just not, but anyway, that's another thing. So that's number six. Number five, afraid of the unknown. Here we go. So that goes back to not wanting to break down the patty roller system instead of saying they say they need sensitivity training but if your commands and what you're trying to do is based on the patty roller system to begin with it doesn't matter how many how much sensitivity training you have you might be out there dancing with the little kids but then you'll find a video of you roughing up a black man that's a dance that's just that's just that's just right yeah. that's just time. a dance afraid of the unknown people talk tearing down the system but every time election season comes they are running to get with the person that makes them feel uh, that they can make the system better so anytime someone comes up and they're just speaking some of the same tropes that black people speak then all of a sudden the people are jumping on them, and these are some of the same people that talk about, yeah, we got to, we got to stay, uh, we proud to be black, and we have to be black, and we have to do that. And then the first time they get a chance to get around right. somebody that's kicking some of the same knowledge, all of a sudden they just with no it. Agenda. With, with, there's no agenda other right. than to be there and to complain, right. but no, this is what we want you to do. No agenda for the black community. No, no, it can help the right, right. This is what we want you to do. Right. For us, because we know we're in this system, are you willing to do this? Right. More than just lip service. Right. More than just lip service. A matter of fact, just put us in position and have us, and we'll take care of it ourselves. Okay? So, afraid of the unknown, not willing to do. How can you say that you want to destroy the system, but you're still using the currency? Okay the currency to fund what you're doing. Right. See, that's that's the biggest question right there. So, is it just all talk? So, remember, this is 10 reasons off the question. Is that talking proud to be black just a hustle and not a hustle? This is the top 10 reasons why it's just a hustle. Which, you know, I'm getting ready to get off the hamster. You know what I mean? Number four. I, I stopped being in the hamster wheel about that Halloween show. I say, make your face as black as possible because you're yeah. not representing me. Right. <laughs> or anybody that I know. Right. You know? Now, all Joseph did, none of them. Right? Okay. Just 
plain old lie, number four, to get what they want. They won't pay their debts, which goes against biblical law, which is a total loss. So they just totally lie. They say, I'm black, I'm this, I'm that, I'm probably black. But when it's time to pay their debts, they don't pay their debts. That's, that's just... No, I'm, I'm, so, so what you're saying is, you say, I'm black, I'm proud to be black, but I want your services from you, black man, but I don't want to give you any money for your services. But what I'll do is, I'll give money to the white man for services. But just because you black like me, I expect you to do everything for me for free. Uh, they don't want to pay their debts. <laughs> no, but right. to me, that's a form of self-hate. When, so you found upon that. Um, I feel that's a form of self-hate because when I see black people want another black businessman to do something for them for free, right? But then they'll, the same services they'll get from a white person and they have no problem or no, no issue at all handing over money, right? But it's something within them, which is the deep seated self-hate, self-hate that they may not even be conscious of that they do not want to provide funding to that black businessman at this point but they would prefer to give it to a white man who has not invested any time or anything into the black community but begrudgedly will not hand over no, or if they, no, if they do for they, begrudgingly, they, they get give it over to a black person begrudgingly you said begrudgingly. and they'll be upset about it right so i mean i don't know i just because Coming, you know, I mean, I don't know. You just, I'm an observer, you know. Which gets us to number three. Right. You brought it up, and here we are, number three. People are conditioned to see the grass is greener, water is colder, money is more valuable from the Caucasian more than spreading and making money with each other. Right. We are conditioned, but not we. And I and I do not. Because it's give, not not all black people are that not are not. You know, I can't even. Not uh, all black people are not like that. It's just like a few, you know, that I few, observe is like that because they few, are. But, but you know, one <laughs> apple <laughs> spoils the whole bunch. You remember that old saying? So I broke that old saying down in my okay. mind. That says, "One apple spoils the old bunch." First of all, the apple will be stinking, possibly. Maybe not because you know you make poker free. But anyway, they'll be thinking, but then what why the app one bad apple spoils the whole bunch is that there's worms in that apple. Right. And those worms are able to spread out and get into other apples within the bunch. Right. Right? Right. And thus and so by the time you get through, you might search through to only find one apple that's still good because all of them or the rest of them are worm infested. Right? So I don't give people the benefit of the doubt anymore because if a person knows that they owe a debt right. or they know consciously that right. they go places and they say, oh, I thought this was going to be an event put on by black people. When I got there, it was top notch. So what are you saying? What are you saying when you say well, that? Well, so right? no, that's where when I said a lot of stuff is like deep seated. No, no, but what I'm saying to the you deep is deep seated self hate that they may not even be conscious of. Here's here's where it is. But it's not who, here. I'm it's not that the white event is better than the black event. Is that by the finances were more because of all of the stealing. That has been done over the centuries to right. make it possible for them to put on events right. that are top notch versus the lower finances of black people. So it's not about it being a black event, right. it's about the finances that are put there because that's all that you could afford to spend right. or afford to use to put this event on. Right. right? 
So that's what it is. So it's not about being a black or a white, Asian, whatever group of people it is. It's about the financial ability, the finances to put the event on, right? And so that's the difference. So that's why the people are conditioned to think that the grass is green. So they automatically say, oh, this event was better because it was put on. No, it, it, it could appear to be better because there was more financial Backing liberation. Right. They were more liberated to put on more and to right. spend more to make it appear to be greater. Right. But it looks like to me, right. before BET was taken over, right. their awards programs outdid it, it did. The, and then the, all the other awards programs started to copy. Still, yeah, I, still a copy idea. And then the right. white company came and said, Right. We want to buy your company, right? So that you don't look like you outdo us. That's what this is about. Always. I think it, it just depends on that person and how they were brought up and, and raised, and because, like years ago, years years ago, like back in the uh, Ohio days, right? We went to see during that time of year when they had all of the different like uh, dance. Um, companies, you know, on television, and the big the Nutcracker would come to town, and all of this stuff. Um, our thing was Alvin Ailey, That's right? right? Uh -huh. So I mean, it depends on I mean, how you were raised and what you were conditioned to. I was always raised and conditioned, and and you know, like the, the Alvin Ailey and, and, and the Kara movie. I always saw value. You know, we saw value in our own people. So, you know, when you, when people speak and they say certain things, you know, it kind of speaks volumes sometimes. And you kind of like, come on, why would you say that about another black person? Which is just, I mean. But you're black and you want people to support your event. But you don't want to support to say, hey, other black people. Now, his event could be so much better if it was white. I mean, that's, I mean, I, I don't know. I've seen it. <laughs> Observed it, shocked by a lot of stuff, but hey, you know. Number two, meritorious manumission. There was a law in 1710, meritorious manumission. If you told on a slave about uh, rebellions or, or, or anything, if you told on them, then you would get rewarded for telling on your people. So it was a way to advance your status within this system, the system of white supremacy, racism within America at the time, right? So people are still under meritorious manumission mentally. Okay. Um, let, uh, let the other know what's going on. This is number one. It's, no, this is number two. This is where a person will tell on another black person to gain favor uh, with the powers that be to get a reward. So people have that. So they feel if I'm able to be around this person, I give them all of the breaks right. and all of the opportunities, then I'm going to be able to be around other people because they say, oh, you're working with that person and I don't see that. And I'm going to give you this and you're going to get rewarded right. for being around that person. So it's a bunch of things. It's conditioning Meritorious manumission, purposefully being under meritorious manumission. People are comfortable. comfortable. They're comfortable, right. right? So, is you know uh, that that uh, that thing saying, "I'm proud to be black." Are you? If 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 we, if you're if you're one of these people on the list, are you? I mean, we know that we're in a system where we have to work, right? But what are we truly working towards? Or are we leaving it to be even worse for the generations later? Because this, this, it was better for us, but we had to battle against the older generation who wouldn't give us the reins. They held the reins, they're elder Right. And now we're in a situation where we moved on and did something else. Right. And now we're in a situation where the next generation is coming up they are totally detached from the elders, from the people who are 
so-called elders, right? So number one, talking about I'm proud to be black, is it just a hustle? Number one is money making hustle. So money making hustle meaning that you're moving your feet, you're moving, dropping your lips and you're moving your feet and you're saying, yeah, I'm proud to be black. I'm proud to be black. But really, it's just a money making hustle. Not even a hustle. Not even a hustle. H U S T L E, but a hustle. H U S S L E. Because actions actually speak louder than words. Because I just go by the person's actions. Because once a Caucasian person shows some interest and starts talking pro black. People take it hook, line, and sinker and are caught in and they say, let me go along with this because this will be a money-making puzzle which then leads into mandatorious money mission, which leads into people are conditioned, just plain old lies, afraid of the unknown, number six, not willing to be educated, can't seem to get off the hamster wheel. Uh, relying on the older generation to have all the answers will plain old just uh, will plain old just don't give a F as long as we can turn up and number 10 we are rooted in plantation religion so it's all set up and that's, that's the top 10 reasons and look let me off the hamster wheel I, I I look at it like I don't even talk about it no more because right. it is what it is, right. and people know already right. where I stand. Right. So let me liberate myself and by what your actions here, by, by, your by, by my actions and my work show right. what yeah, I believe right. in. So right. I don't even have to speak on it anymore. Right. I don't even have to worry about that. Halloween comes, uh, right. there it is. The them acting pale, right. pale face like they do. Right. And all that and all that other stuff, but right. my main point is: it, Are you really proud to be black if you are if you somewhere land on that list? Mm-hmm. And so that's it, people. How about that? So that's that's you know yeah. the answer to that question to me. Is proud is stating that you're proud to be black a hustle, but you uh, demonstrate or you can watch a person and they they act like something that's on that list. Then no, they're not proud. They're just trying to be honorary right. Caucasian since uh, uh, desegregation. Not, not desegregation, but what's that other shit called? Uh, Desegregation and uh, whatever that other shit is called. It's not even worth it. Desegregation was good. Walk where you want to walk. But that other shit, that shit was detrimental. But anyway, people. Well, my view. Go ahead. My view is um, hey, it's just good old fashioned actions speak louder than words, right? Um, And like the works that I've seen, you know, I read Nashi, Yvette Corinth, Del Tone Talk. Right, and um, this whole, you know, with the elections going on, it's very, very, very important to not, you know, do a photo op, right, with the politician. When you had an opportunity to get in their ear, hey, you know, this is like the agenda, what are you gonna do for our community? Da da da. Like have um, have like a list, you know. Um, have like this is you know how about you know if you want the votes from our community, right? This is what we need. How about bringing certain uh, bringing in corporations, right? Who can bring in jobs? So how about bringing jobs into the community? Or how about? Right. How about re- let's stop the job topic? None of this is going to change reparations until none of this is going to change until the three fifths 
of a human being is changing the Constitution. That's right. it. When you want to put it down there, what are you going to do about that? Right. When are you going to write an amendment that doesn't have to be placed into law every 25 years, every 30 years, every 50 years, but that is amended and that's okay. it. When you change three-fifths of a human being, three-fifths of a human being, uh, three-fifths compromise clause in the Constitution, then you change a lot of things and things will then have to be ironed out because it's what's in the original Constitution that matters. Once that's amended and changed permanently, then all these other things will fall into step. But until that happens, that's, it, it's not going to happen. And so people can be all they want. You know what I like to do? I like to take photo ops with the politicians because they know exactly where I'm coming. Oh, they, they know where I'm coming from. So when they take a picture with me, <laughs> they want to be with me. Right. Not not me wanting to be with them. Right. That, 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 that's the difference with me. I'm not trying to be with them. I'm not right. trying to uh, be with them. But they take a picture with me, right. they want to be down with what, what I'm right. doing. Right? And so that's right. it. So people, in closing, this has been another robust yes. episode right. of the film review. Right. Movies, music, culture, politics, and society. And then we hit it hard today with politics and society. Don't forget, people, that the Lou Nail Full interview uh, will be coming up on Tuesday where you see the uncut, and that's going to be on TV shows and films created by Crazy D Channel on YouTube. And again, you can see that globally. Let me get my sheet out. You can see that globally by following these instructions right here. And what you do is you download the Vimeo app and the YouTube app onto your smart TV or Roku device hooked to your television. And then you search Lordland Films. And when you search Lordland Films, you will see every, all the things that we do. And you can watch in your city, your town, globally. Globally, right? So we out here, we make it happen. We make it do what it do. You know what I mean? So that's what we want to say about that. We want to thank you. Make sure you pick up the periodical that's out there. You know what I mean? Pick up the periodical. Make sure that you check it out on the inside. And check out everything. And make sure you stay with the schedule of shows. Where is that at? Right here, the schedule of shows. And so that's what we Um Also, uh, the own the Black... Uh, Woman's Conversation, uh-huh. Grace Series, Enlightening, and they ended with something this week, which um, they may have said it prior, but definitely be kind to one another, and that goes back to what you were saying, you know, about the black people, because it's very, very, like, I, you know, was raised, you, you have to be, you can't just walk around with the Bible and protest being a Christian and not live it. You can't turn it on and off, right? So be kind to one another, love one another, and if you are proud to be black, show it. You know, be kind to one another, love one another, respect one another, pull each other up. And not down. Start and start Mentor to, each other. And mentally start to believe. Mentally yeah. believe. Yeah. And when you catch yourself thinking negatively about your own people. Think about being lynched. And then you will say, yeah, hey, the ultimate, a, you know, the think, ultimate people used to be thinking negatively. Yeah, about think about, people. think about, hey, wait a minute. Why am I having this negative thought about my own people? So maybe you kind of like reel yourself back in. And say no, that's that's a negative thought, and, and we know where negative thoughts come from. So just moving forward, be kind to one another, love one another, and have a wonderful week. And make sure that you pick up Lunel. I only drink at work. Available on HeyLunel.com. HeyLunel.com. And so that's it, people. We are out for another week. This is the film review. Movies, music, culture, politics, and society. We are the husband and wife team, the voice of the filmmaker, and the critic. I'm Crazy D. And we review 
movies, music, culture, politics, and society. And we will see you next time on the film breathe. Let me let me get ready. Let me get ready. Let me get you a setup. That's right. The film breathe. You. There's something about Germany. Why I made a curator's pick about. Heart, 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 he